working on the libretto for Ascription, one of the things I tried to imagine was what Mark Landis might be feeling when he's making these visits to museums and galleries and handing over these works of art like they're precious masterpieces, even though he knows that he used magic marker and paint from Hobby Lobby to create them. Sort of what's running through his mind? Um, and the answer is quite a bit. <laughs> We're thinking of this opera as an installation opera um, where we're always blurring the lines between what's real and what's not. And so what this opera is trying to do is immerse you in a gallery space like this one where you're a patron viewing the art as though you're at a museum on an everyday basis. People who are sitting next to you are suddenly characters in this opera and it kind of clues you into the fact that Anyone who's been won over by a forged piece of art is kind of somehow implicated in the success of it. One of the most interesting aspects of this production is how it's performative. So the audience is involved in the performance just by the fact that they're in the same room. There's no defined stage space versus audience space. Uh, the numbers move throughout the gallery in ways that you might not be expecting. And that's what we want to do. We want to surprise people. Um, Mark Landis is performing a role when he comes and passes off a work of art as um, a stellar original. But we're also performing roles as audience members that are going to be constantly shifting and changing unexpectedly. It's a chamber opera, and so we have four principal roles. We have a a roving band of musicians that are five deep, um, and they're stationed throughout the gallery, so at very various parts of the production. Um, you'll have a scene taking place in one area, and then a different sort of installation taking place in other spots. Um, and audience members sometimes need to make a choice whether you're going to follow and stick with one character doing one particular action representing their point of view, or maybe you have to shift and walk a couple rooms over to catch the next thing, um, and how these intermingle uh, is part of how the music's put together. One of the wonderful challenges I had to deal with as someone creating the words um, that would be sung is, you know, how to display the complexity, the pride he's feeling, but at the same time maybe a little bit of, um, maybe feeling a little sneaky and a little proud of himself in a different way too, not just for what he's created, but for what he's getting away with.